That's Anne Margaret in Bye Bye Birdie. She went on to work with the likes of Steve McQueen, Jack Nicholson, and of course, the King, Elvis Presley. Anne Margaret, a Swedish American actress and singer, rose to fame in the early 1960s, captivating audiences with her vivacious personality and talent. Will someone tell this uh, Romeo? I'm not his Juliet. Amidst her burgeoning career, she crossed paths with Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, on the set of Viva Las Vegas. What unfolded was a tale of romance and rumor that would entangle their lives and legacies for decades to come. The enigmatic allure of Anne Margaret. Anne Margaret, born Anne Margaret Olsen on April 28, 1941, in Valsjöbyn, Sweden, brought a unique blend of European elegance and American charm to the silver screen. Her family moved to the United States when she was a child, and it was in the vibrant cultural melting pot of America that her star began to rise. With her flaming red hair, sultry voice, and an undeniable charisma, Anne Margaret quickly captivated audiences and critics alike. From her early days, Anne Margaret showed an affinity for the arts. She trained in ballet and by the time she attended Northwestern University, was already making waves with her singing and acting talents. It gives you such a glow just to know you're wearing lipstick and heels. Her breakthrough came with a captivating performance on a nationally televised talent show, which led to a recording contract and roles in Hollywood. I was sitting in my office, this little girl came in, and she sang two songs, and I took her to Las Vegas with me. And here she is on the Jack Benny Show. And I think she's got a brilliant career. Help me bring her on. Anne Margaret. It wasn't long before Anne Margaret's alluring presence caught the eye of George Sidney, who directed her in her film debut, Pocket Full of Miracles, in 1961. However, it was her role in Bye Bye Birdie, 1963, that truly showcased her range as a performer and solidified her status as a rising star. Her portrayal of Kim McAfee, a character exuding both innocence and allure, captured the nation's heart. Beyond her roles in film and music, Anne Margaret's public persona was one of sophistication blended with approachability. She exuded a warmth that made her relatable, yet there remained an air of mystery about her that kept audiences intrigued. Her performances were electric, marked by an energy and passion that seemed to transcend the screen. In her early years in Hollywood, Anne Margaret carefully navigated her career, choosing roles that highlighted her versatility. She was as comfortable in dramatic parts as she was in comedic and musical roles. This versatility earned her respect among her peers and a diverse fan base that appreciated her for more than just her striking looks. As her career progressed, Anne Margaret earned critical acclaim for her performances, garnering multiple award nominations. Her role in Carnal Knowledge, 1971, alongside Jack Nicholson, earned her an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress, further cementing her status as a serious actress. Anne Margaret's allure went beyond her on-screen performances. She was known for her electrifying stage presence during live performances. I met a nice old man upon the village green. I helped him cross the street into his limousine. Her concerts were high-energy affairs, with Anne Margaret singing, dancing, and captivating audiences with her dynamic stage presence. She was not just an actress. She was a performer in the truest sense. Her personal life, however, was kept relatively private, a stark contrast to the openness with which she performed. This dichotomy between her public persona and private life only added to the enigmatic allure that surrounded her. Anne Margaret was an open book when it came to her art, but maintained a level of personal mystique that kept the public perennially fascinated. The King of Rock and Roll, Elvis Presley's Rise to Fame. Elvis Aaron Presley, a name that would become synonymous with rock and roll, began his life in humble circumstances in Tupelo, Mississippi, on January 8, 1935. From these modest beginnings, Elvis would rise to become one of the most iconic figures in the history of music, earning the moniker. 
the king of rock and roll. His ascent to fame was meteoric, his impact on music and culture unparalleled, and his legacy enduring. As a child, Elvis was deeply influenced by the gospel music he heard in church and the country and rhythm and blues tunes that permeated the airwaves. These diverse musical influences would later converge in his unique that would come to define the sound of rock and roll. Elvis's foray into music began in earnest when he received his first guitar at the age of 11. Despite his innate shyness, the young Presley found solace and expression in music. In 1953, an 18-year-old Elvis walked into Sun Records hoping to record a song as a birthday gift for his mother. This simple act would set in motion a series of events that would catapult him to stardom. Sam Phillips, the owner of Sun Records, saw potential in the young singer and decided to take a chance on him. A year later, Elvis released That's All Right, his first commercial recording, which became an instant hit. The song, a cover of an Arthur Crudup blues number was infused with Elvis's unique style and energy. It was different from anything else on the radio, and it caught the attention of a youth yearning for something new and exciting. Elvis's rise to fame was rapid. His unique sound, a blend of country, blues, and rhythm and blues, along with his distinctive, energetic style of performing, set him apart from other artists of the time. His hip-shaking performances, while controversial, made him an instant sex symbol and sent shockwaves through the conservative landscape of 1950s America. He was both adored and criticized, a figure that seemed to embody the rebellious spirit of the youth of the era. The release of Heartbreak Hotel in 1956 catapulted Elvis to national fame, and it wasn't long before he became an international sensation. His television appearances, particularly on The Ed Sullivan Show, introduced him to an even broader audience, solidifying his status as a cultural icon. Elvis's film career began that same year with Love Me Tender, further expanding his reach and influence. Throughout the late 1950s and early 1960s, Elvis continued to dominate the music charts with a string of hits, songs like Hound Dog, Jailhouse Rock, and Can't Help Falling in Love, became anthems of a generation. However, his career took a brief hiatus when he was drafted into the U.S. and Army in 1958. His service, far from diminishing his popularity, only increased the public's fascination with him. Upon his return from military service, Elvis resumed his recording and film careers. While the quality of his films was often criticized, they were nonetheless commercial successes, and his soundtracks continued to produce hits. Elvis's music evolved over time, reflecting changes in both his personal life and the shifting musical landscape. Yet throughout the various phases of his career, he maintained an undeniable charisma and a voice that could convey a remarkable range of emotions. The collision of two stars, Anne Margaret and Elvis, on the set of Viva Las Vegas. In 1963, the paths of two of the era's most luminous stars, Anne Margaret and Elvis Presley converged on the vibrant set of Viva Las Vegas, a musical film destined to become a classic. This pairing was not merely a casting decision, but a collision of talents, personalities, and charisma that would generate a chemistry rarely seen in the annals of Hollywood. As the cameras rolled, the electric connection between the king of rock and roll and the enchanting Swedish-American siren was palpable. Both at the zenith of their careers, Elvis and Anne Margaret brought to their roles an intensity and vitality that transcended the silver screen. They portrayed Lucky Jackson and Rusty Martin, characters whose on-screen romance mirrored the burgeoning connection between the co-stars in real life. The filming of Viva Las Vegas was a whirlwind of high-energy dance numbers, passionate duets, and tender moments that blurred the lines between performance and reality. Anne Margaret, with her spirited demeanor and captivating presence, matched Elvis's magnetic charm and dynamic artistry beat for beat. Their shared scenes were a spectacle of color, movement, and emotion, showcasing not only their individual talents but also a remarkable synergy that seemed to come naturally. Off-screen, the bond between Anne Margaret and Elvis grew. They found in each other a kindred spirit, someone who understood the pressures and pleasures of stardom. Their mutual respect for each other's talents laid the foundation for a friendship that quickly blossomed into a deeper connection. 
They shared an affinity for motorcycles, music, and a certain joie de vivre that made their time together electric. Rumors of a romance between the two stars began to swirl as the filming progressed. The cast and crew witnessed their undeniable chemistry, both on and off the set, fueling speculation that their relationship had evolved beyond mere friendship. Elvis, known for his flirtatious nature, had met his match in Anne Margaret, whose vivacity and charm were a perfect complement to his own. As the production of Viva Las Vegas drew to a close, it was evident that the film had captured something special. The sizzling performances of its leads elevated the movie beyond the realm of typical musical fare. The final product was a celebration of life, love, and the magic that can happen when two stars align. The movie was a hit, with audiences flocking to theaters to witness the undeniable chemistry between Elvis and Anne Margaret. The release of Viva Las Vegas solidified the film's place in the pantheon of classic musicals, and the relationship between its stars became the subject of intense public fascination. Yet, as the spotlight on their connection grew, both Elvis and Anne Margaret faced the challenge of navigating the complexities of a romance born under the gaze of the public eye. Whispers and speculations, the rumored affair begins. In the wake of Viva Las Vegas, Whispers and speculations about the nature of the relationship between Anne Margaret and Elvis Presley began to spread like wildfire. Our relationship was very strong and very serious and very real. We went together for one year. The chemistry that had ignited on set was too palpable to ignore, and fans, along with the ever-curious media, started piecing together a narrative of a love affair that had seemingly blossomed in the glare of the Hollywood spotlight. The rumor mill was fueled by the undeniable parallels between the film's plot and the off-screen interactions between the two stars. Both Anne Margaret and Elvis were at pivotal points in their careers, wielding influence and enjoying the adulation of millions. Yet, beyond their celebrity status, they were also two individuals navigating the complexities of human emotion and attraction. The press was quick to pick up on the story, with tabloids and gossip columns painting a picture of a passionate romance. They chronicled every public appearance, dissecting body language and shared glances for evidence of a love affair. Even their respective interviews became sources of speculation, as both stars spoke fondly of each other, often with a palpable warmth and respect that seemed to hint at something deeper. As the rumors gained momentum, the impact was twofold. Well, it, can you lend me a car until you have mine running again? Well, we'll do better than that. I'll be happy to drive you wherever you want to go. On one hand, the purported affair added a layer of intrigue to the already successful film, drawing audiences eager to catch a glimpse of the off-screen romance. On the other hand, it posed a significant challenge for both Anne Margaret and Elvis, as they found their personal lives subjected to intense scrutiny. The situation was complicated further by Elvis's existing relationship with Priscilla Beaulieu, whom he had met during his military service in Germany. Though they were not yet married, their connection was well known, and the rumors of his involvement with Anne Margaret cast a shadow over their relationship. Is this about what happens on the road? The you girls. Know. You think I yeah. give a shit about the girls Maybe that you sneak you into the side door? No, matter. I couldn't care less about whoever it is you sneak through the side door. Anne Margaret, for her part, maintained a dignified silence on the matter, navigating the tumult of speculation with poise and discretion. Elvis, known for his enigmatic persona, was equally tight-lipped, leaving the public and the press to draw their own conclusions. The rumored affair was a testament to the era's fascination with celebrity romances, especially those that bore the hallmarks of a Hollywood script. The blend of glamour, talent, and a hint of scandal made the story irresistible to the public, even if the truth remained shrouded in mystery. As time passed, the whispers and speculations evolved into a narrative that was part myth, part reality. The lines between the characters of Lucky Jackson and Rusty Martin and their real-life counterparts blurred, creating a legend that seemed to transcend the ordinary. It was a story that encapsulated the allure of Hollywood a place where fantasy and reality intertwine and where the boundaries between life and art are often indistinct. Public perceptions and private realities. The whirlwind of speculation surrounding Anne Margaret and Elvis Presley's relationship. I was working with Elvis. Yeah? I 
love you in the movie. was a compelling saga of public perceptions clashing with private realities. In the golden age of Hollywood, where stars were revered and their lives meticulously scrutinized, the boundary between personal affairs and public fascination was often blurred. The rumored romance between Anne Margaret and Elvis epitomized this phenomenon, as fans and the media alike became enamored with the narrative unfolding before them. Public perceptions of the affair were largely shaped by the image-driven culture of the entertainment industry. Anne Margaret and Elvis were both emblematic figures of their time, exuding a charisma and allure that captivated millions. Their on-screen chemistry in Viva Las Vegas only served to fan the flames of curiosity, leading the public to project the romantic tension of their characters onto the actors themselves. The media played a pivotal role in shaping these perceptions. Tabloids and gossip columns were rife with speculation and sensational headlines, often presenting conjecture as fact. This relentless coverage created a feedback loop where the more the public consumed these stories, the more the press was incentivized to dig deeper. As a result, the line between Anne Margaret and Elvis's public personas and their private lives became increasingly indistinct. However, the private realities of both stars were far more complex than the narratives constructed around them. Anne Margaret, despite being thrust into the limelight, remained guarded about her personal affairs. She navigated the rumors with grace and professionalism, understanding the nature of Hollywood, but refusing to let it dictate her personal narrative. Elvis, on the other hand, was no stranger to public scrutiny. Yet the intensity of the rumors surrounding him and Anne Margaret brought a new level of attention to his private life. He was engaged in a delicate balancing act, trying to maintain his relationship with Priscilla while contending with the growing fascination surrounding his co-star. The private realities of their situation were further complicated by the expectations and norms of the time. Hollywood stars were often placed on pedestals, expected to embody ideals of romance and glamour. Any deviation from these expectations was fodder for public consumption and critique. Anne Margaret and Elvis, like many of their contemporaries, were caught in this web of expectation, navigating their personal lives in the shadow of their public personas. The impact on Priscilla Presley and the marriage. The swirling rumors and intense media scrutiny surrounding the supposed affair between Anne Margaret and Elvis Presley inevitably cast a shadow on Priscilla Presley and her relationship with Elvis. At the heart of this sensational narrative lay a very real and personal story of love, commitment, and the strains imposed by life in the public eye. Priscilla Beaulieu had met Elvis Presley during his military service in Germany, and their relationship had blossomed despite the challenges posed by his fame and the physical distance between them. By the time Elvis was filming Viva Las Vegas with Anne Margaret, Priscilla had already been a significant presence in his life for several years. The strength of their bond was evident. They had overcome numerous obstacles and remained committed to each other. However, the sudden influx of rumors regarding an affair had the potential to destabilize even the most solid of relationships. How you doing? I'm leaving you, and I'm taking Lisa with me. For Priscilla, who had navigated the complexities of being involved with one of the world's most coveted superstars, the rumors were a public and personal affront. The media's insatiable appetite for scandal combined with the adoration fans had for Elvis and Anne Margaret's on-screen pairing, meant that her relationship was subject to relentless speculation and judgment. The impact of these rumors on Priscilla and her relationship with Elvis was multifaceted. On one level, it was a test of trust and resilience, challenging the couple to maintain their bond amid a tempest of gossip and innuendo. This was no easy task, given that the entertainment industry is often a landscape where reality and fiction are intricately woven together, making it difficult to discern the truth. Moreover, the situation was a stark reminder of the sacrifices and compromises involved in being part of a high-profile relationship. Priscilla had to contend with not only the typical challenges of a romantic relationship, but also the added layer of public scrutiny and narrative shaping that accompanied Elvis's stardom. It required a level of fortitude and self-assurance to navigate these turbulent waters, qualities that Priscilla demonstrably possessed. Despite the pressures, 
Priscilla and Elvis's relationship endured. In 1967, they married in a ceremony that captured the world's attention, presenting a united front that seemed to counter the narrative of a fractured romance. Their marriage, although eventually ending in divorce, produced a daughter, Lisa Marie, and spanned several years of shared experiences and growth. Anne Margaret's Perspective, Addressing the Rumors Amidst the swirling rumors and relentless media scrutiny surrounding her relationship with Elvis Presley, Anne Margaret's perspective remained largely enigmatic for many years. Known for her poise and professionalism, she navigated the storm of speculation with a dignified silence, choosing to focus on her burgeoning career rather than the gossip that sought to define her personal life. It wasn't until years later in her autobiography, Anne Margaret, My Story, published in 1994, that she would candidly address the rumors and offer her perspective on the relationship that had captivated the public's imagination. In her memoir, Anne Margaret spoke with heartfelt honesty about her time with Elvis, revealing a deep and genuine affection that transcended the typical Hollywood romance. She described their connection as immediate and intense, a bond forged not only by their shared experiences in the entertainment industry, but also by a mutual understanding and respect for one another. It was a relationship that she cherished, one that was as multifaceted as it was profound. Anne Margaret's account painted a picture of two people caught in the whirlwind of fame, yet finding solace and companionship in each other's presence. She recalled the laughter, the conversations, and the moments of vulnerability that they shared, offering a glimpse into the private world that they had carved out amidst the chaos of their public lives. It was clear from her words that what she shared with Elvis was something rare and special, a connection that left an indelible mark on her heart. At the same time, Anne Margaret addressed the rumors with grace and understanding. She acknowledged the public's fascination with their relationship, attributing it to the chemistry that they had displayed both on and off the screen. However, she also emphasized the respect that she had for Elvis's relationship with Priscilla, recognizing the complex dynamics at play and the impact that the rumors had on all parties involved. Anne Margaret's reflections on her time with Elvis provided a poignant counterpoint to the sensationalized narratives that had been constructed around them. She painted a portrait of a relationship that was as real and human as any other, characterized by its joys, its challenges, and its tender moments. It was a narrative that emphasized the depth of their connection, rather than the scandal that the media had so eagerly portrayed. Elvis's Downfall, The Role of Personal Turmoil The king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, faced a complex web of personal challenges that ultimately contributed to his untimely demise. His downfall, a tragic narrative woven from a tapestry of fame, pressure, and personal strife, reflects the dark side of celebrity that so often lurks behind the glittering facade of stardom. Elvis's ascent to the pinnacle of entertainment was as meteoric as it was groundbreaking. With his unique voice, charismatic stage presence, and a style that blended various musical genres, he became a cultural icon, shaping the landscape of popular music and influencing countless artists. However, the pressures accompanying such immense fame began to mount steadily. The constant public scrutiny, the demanding tour schedules, and the weight of being a symbol of an era placed an enormous burden on Elvis's shoulders. As his career progressed, personal turmoil began to intertwine with the pressures of his professional life. His marriage to Priscilla, while initially seeming like a fairy tale romance, faced its share of challenges. The rumors of his involvement with Anne Margaret and other co-stars, whether grounded in truth or fabricated by the media, added strain to their relationship. Although they shared a deep bond, culminating in the birth of their daughter, Lisa Marie, the marriage ultimately could not withstand the external pressures and internal conflicts, leading to their divorce in 1973. Elvis's health, too, began to deteriorate exacerbated by a grueling performance schedule and a lifestyle that became increasingly unhealthy. His reliance on prescription medications to manage his energy levels and mood had spiraling consequences. The vibrant, energetic performer known for electrifying audiences began to struggle with his physical and mental well-being, a struggle that was sadly mirrored in his increasingly lackluster performances. 
Despite his declining health, the demand for Elvis's presence and performances did not wane. His manager, Colonel Tom Parker, continued to book him for tours and engagements, often disregarding the clear signs of Elvis's exhaustion and need for rest. This relentless pace only further aggravated his health issues, leaving him caught in a vicious cycle of performance, medication, and deteriorating well-being. Reflections in Later Years Anne Margaret and Elvis's Legacy As the years passed, the intense fervor that once surrounded Anne Margaret and Elvis Presley's rumored affair settled into the quieter, more reflective tones of legacy and remembrance. Anne Margaret, with the wisdom that comes with age and experience, looked back on her time with Elvis not through the lens of scandal, but with a fondness and respect that highlighted the depth of their connection and the impact it had on both their lives. In interviews and through her memoir, Anne Margaret shared memories of Elvis that painted a picture of a man who was not just the king of rock and roll, but also a kindred spirit, a dear friend, and an extraordinary talent whose influence was immeasurable. She spoke of their shared love for music and performance, their mutual dedication to their craft, and the laughter and joy that characterized their moments together. It was a narrative that transcended the simplistic tabloid tales, offering instead a poignant reflection on a bond that was as genuine as it was impactful. For Anne Margaret, the legacy of Elvis Presley was not just in the songs he sang or the movies he starred in, it was in the way he revolutionized the entertainment industry, broke cultural barriers, and touched the hearts of millions. She recognized his contribution to the arts, celebrating his innovation and the indelible mark he left on the world. Her reflections were a tribute to a man whose talent was as vast as his influence and whose memory continued to inspire long after his passing. Elvis's legacy, as seen through Anne Margaret's eyes, was also deeply personal. She understood the complexities of his life, the challenges he faced, and the humanity that lay beneath the iconic persona. In her musings, there was a profound respect for his journey, his struggles, and the enduring strength of his spirit. It was a perspective that acknowledged the entirety of who Elvis was. A groundbreaking artist, a beloved public figure, and a man with dreams, desires, and vulnerabilities. Moreover, Anne Margaret's reflections in later years provided insight into her own journey and growth. She emerged from the whirlwind of her early career and the intense spotlight of her association with Elvis as a woman of resilience, grace, and enduring talent. Her career flourished, her performances continued to captivate, and her legacy as an actress and performer became firmly cemented in the annals of entertainment history.